everybody, welcome to Franny Square and to a tutorial on bags made with ribbon yarn. So before we get started, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to everybody who has been helping out Claire. I know that the winners of the Share the Yarny Love giveaway donated their yarn to Claire. I'm sending that out to her today. So thank you for that. I am so proud to be part of this community. Just such a great group of people. So thank you, everybody. Today, I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to make these bags out of ribbon yarn and using leather bases that I had purchased. For this project, I used the furls hook. I've been using it for a while now, so my review is going to be coming out shortly. Furls just moved their warehouse and they're having a warehouse warming sale right now. I'm gonna put a link in the description below in case you're looking to buy furls and I will have this review coming out within the next few days. Okay, so a few notes about the bags. I did one with the round base and I started out using Hobie's method for attaching the base. Didn't love it, I have to admit, because you have this edge sticking out here like this, which I didn't like the look of that. I have to obviously trim that. And I felt that it's not as sturdy here also, attached this way. So when I went and did the rectangular base, I joined it in a different way, coming up around the edge of the base, and you don't have that flat edge, and I do believe that it's sturdier. So I would recommend using this method, but again, totally up to you. I will be showing you detailed steps on how to make this bag. This bag is basically the same thing, except without corners, so it's easier. You don't have to account for corners, and you just go around and around, but it's the same stitch pattern. And then what I did here is, to make it my own, you can do whatever you like, I chained a long strand of ribbon, and then I just, you know, stuck it in through the stitches like this and tied it in front because I thought that looked really cute. And the handle, I used the Romanian cord, which I will be showing on both of the bags. So I'll be showing you how to do that as well. I also wanted to mention that if you'd like to make a basket rather than a bag, it's very simple. You can use the leather base with the same stitch and stop short, just as tall as you would like the sides of your basket to be. You wouldn't put the pleat in and you could use plastic grid or cardboard on the inside to give it a little bit more strength. And you can cover it with a felt on the inside or you could crochet a piece that you lay in the inside on top of the plastic grid or on top of the cardboard and then just sew it along the top edges of your basket. So I just wanted to mention that that was a choice as well that you could make to have baskets rather than bags. Okay, so grab your hooks, grab your yarn, and let's get started. Okay, so for this version, I'm making a rectangular version. So I'm going to use this leather base that I got from Hobie. It is a 19 by 14 centimeter base. And I'm going to use Hobie 100% cotton ribbon yarn in black. And what color is this? It says color six. It's a dark gray and color 33, which is a lighter gray. I'm going to use my furls five millimeter hook, a yarn needle, and scissors. Okay, so I'm going to start this base a little bit differently than I did for the round bag. When I did the round bag, I followed the instructions by Hobie, which they had me just slip stitch into the top and attach to those stitches. I don't like this for two reasons. I don't feel like this is strong enough right here at the attachment. And also I don't like this edge sticking out like this. So we're going to try something a little bit different that hopefully will work better. So what I'm gonna do is I am just going to, I'm gonna start in this hole here they don't have a hole directly in the corner, so I'm gonna consider these two corner holes. I'm gonna start after that. And I'm gonna pull up a loop. Okay. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to chain to attach like that. And I'm going to then go into the next. I'm just going to hold my tail along the edge and crochet over top of it into the next stitch and pull up a loop and do a single crochet. And then I'm going to single crochet across until I get to the corner. Now, like I said, there's not really a corner hole per se. There's more like two corner holes here, one on each side. And it's not even exactly the same on each corner. So I'm just gonna do my best. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put two single crochets in each of those to kind of help me turn the corner. So just do single crochets across, two in each of the corners. If you happen to have a base that has just one corner hole, then you could do two or three single crochets in that corner hole to turn the corner and uh, crochet all the way around. I'll meet you back at the beginning. Okay, so I'm back around here. So I'm just going to slip stitch here to my first stitch. And then I'm going to chain three. One, two, three and turn my work, okay? Now I'm gonna work along the outside edge rather than facing the inside, all right? And all I'm gonna do at this point, and I apologize again for the black yarn, but it will get better as we go. So as you can see, there's a front loop and a back loop. Hopefully you can see that to my stitch. And I'm gonna, in that same stitch that my chain three is coming out of, I'm going to double crochet just into the back loop. Okay. And the reason I'm doing that is because then the front loop will become a ridge along this edge and it will cause this to stand up more. And you'll see that as we go along. So in my next stitch right here, I have the front loop and the back loop. Again, I'm gonna double crochet into the back loop. Okay, like that. And then in the next stitch, now I'm coming to my corner here. I'm gonna count these as my corner stitches. This is the one right before it, okay? So I'm going to do a double crochet into the back loop. Again. Then I will do in the corner stitches, I'm going to do two double crochets into each stitch in the back loop only. I'm sorry for that hitting the camera there. One, two into that same stitch. Okay, and then two into this one as well. These are my corner stitches. Okay, and you can start to see this ridge forming here, which is what we're looking for. Those are the fronts of the stitches hanging out, the front loops. Okay, now I'm gonna do a double crochet into each back loop of each stitch until I get to what I consider my two corner stitches, at which point I will put two double crochets in each of those stitches. So every corner for those two corner stitches, you'll do two double crochets into the back loop only. And then along the side, you'll do one single crochet into the back loop only. And I will meet you back when you get back to here at the end of the round. Okay, so I've come around to the beginning here and I have this last stitch here. I'm going to do a double crochet in the back loop only. Like that. And then I'm going to slip stitch to the top of the chain three in the beginning here. Slip stitch just like that. So this is what it looks like. And you can see the ridge around the bottom edge that helps this the sides stand up. 
Okay, so now I'm gonna be ready to switch to my next color. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just fasten off with this color. I'll pull it through. I don't need that one. Okay, and fasten off. Just pull that like that. Okay, so now that I've fastened off, I'm just gonna pick any stitch here and I'm gonna put my hook into that stitch and pull up my next color, which is gonna be the dark gray. With the tail hanging in there. I'm just gonna chain to attach like that, make it nice and tight. And I'm gonna just hold the yarn along the edge and crochet right over it. And I'm gonna go into the next stitch and single crochet like that. And I'm gonna go around to each stitch, making a single crochet. And I'm just going over that tail, laying it nice and flat so it's not bumpy and crocheting over it so I don't have to weave it in at the end. There we go, just like that. Okay, I'm getting to where I fastened off and I'm just going to hold down that tail, the black tail, and go right over that as well. Just holding it down along the edge. So I have as little as possible to weave in at the end. I'm going just into every stitch around like that. And do that all the way around and I'll meet you back at the beginning. Okay, so I'm back to the beginning. I'm gonna just slip stitch to my first stitch here. And then I'm gonna chain three and that's gonna count as my first double crochet. This would be my next stitch right here. So I'm gonna to go to the double crochet below it and do a front post triple crochet. So I'll wrap my yarn twice around my, my crochet hook and I'm going to come down to this double crochet below and go behind the post. So the post is in front of my hook. Then I'm gonna yarn over, grab a loop and then I'm gonna yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and it can be a little difficult to see at times, and then yarn over, pull through two. So that makes that a triple crochet. Okay, so I have my double, and then I have a front post triple. In the next stitch, not the one that I just went over, in my next stitch, I'm gonna do a regular double crochet. Okay. And then in my next stitch, I'm gonna do a front post, again, triple crochet. Wrap twice, go behind the post of the double crochet down here, yarn over, pull up a loop, just like that. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And the reason we're doing a triple every other when we go down here is because we need it to be longer. When we do the double, we're doing it at the top of the stitch so it doesn't need to be as long. So the next stitch, I'm gonna do a regular double. And this is gonna be the pattern all the way around. A double crochet into the stitch. Oops, sorry about that. Now, remember, this triple crochet is for this stitch there. You just wanna remember that and go to the next stitch. So a double cr crochet into the next stitch like that. And then we're gonna go down below the next stitch here and do a front post 
treble crochet. Okay. And then that's for that stitch. So in the next stitch, a regular double. And keep doing that all the way around. And I will meet you back here at the beginning. You're gonna do every other stitch that way, even on the corners, nothing special on the corners. And I'll meet you back here. Okay, so I'm back to the end here. I did my treble crochet below. My chain three at the start was my double crochet and then back to the treble. So all I'm gonna do is I'm going to slip stitch into the top of this chain three. So if I got here and I had a double crochet here and a double crochet here, you could either leave it and every time you come around, you're going to have the two stitches that are the same right here, which you may notice going up the side, or you could fudge it in this row and give yourself an extra stitch and put a treble crochet maybe around here, coming up here. And then as you go around each time after that, it won't be so visible and you'll be able to alternate. This worked out here, so I have the treble, a double, a treble. So I'm just going to go in the top of that chain three and slip stitch to the beginning here, just like that. And then I'm gonna fasten off and move to my light gray. Okay, so there's that row. You can see here I can trim this because I wove that in in the beginning. Okay, so here we go. Now we're working up. So my next row, I'm going to use the light gray. Okay, so now I'm just going to attach in any of the stitches. I recommend pulling up your new loop where there was a treble crochet. Pull through. Chain two attach. Okay, I'm gonna just put a single crochet in that same stitch. And then I'm gonna go around and single crochet into every stitch around. Okay, so just one single crochet into each stitch. I'm holding down my end, so I'm weaving it in at the same time. And you're just going to do that all the way around. When you come over the other end here, again, you'll just hold that down and weave that in as well. So do this all the way around, and I'll meet you back here. Okay, so I'm coming around to the last stitch here. I'll do a single crochet. And then I'm going to slip stitch to my first single crochet here. And there we go. So now I have a row of sing a round of single crochets. So for the next row, so this is going to be your two row repeat for each color a round of single crochets, and the second round, you're going to chain three. That's gonna be your double crochet. Okay, now, this next, so this counts as this stitch. For this next stitch, it was a double crochet before. We have our double crochet here. So now, what we're gonna do is make this the treble crochet front post. So I'm going to go around this and pull this out. Yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. Okay. And then the next where there was a treble crochet, I'm going to do a double. So basically a regular double crochet into the stitch. Basically I'm alternating now. So wherever there was a double, which is sitting back before, now I will be doing a triple. So yarn over twice. I'm gonna grab that, pull it forward, front post, triple. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through 
to, oops, <laughs> did that a little long. And then yarn over and pull through too. There we go. Then for the next one where there was a treble, there's gonna be a double on top of it. And I'm gonna do that all the way around, alternating. So I'm still alternating like I did before, but now it's going to always be the opposite. Wherever there was a double before, it'll now be a treble. Where there was a treble before, it'll now be a double. And you can just think of it also as I'm alternating. I have my regular double crochet, then a treble, then a double, then a treble, then a double. And I'm gonna continue in that pattern all the way around and I'll meet you back here at the beginning. Okay, so I'm back to the beginning here. I just did my triple crochet. I already have my double right here and then my next triple. So I'm just going to go into the top, the third chain of the three chains I did in the beginning and slip stitch. Okay, and then I'm gonna fasten off. Okay, so now it's just the two row repeat and changing your colors as you like. You can see on the round bag here, I just went from darkest to lightest, darkest to lightest, and I kept doing that. And I did it two, three times, three repeats, so a total of nine rows, which is probably what I'll do here. So now I would start with my black again, do a round of single crochet, when I come back around, I do a, I'd slip stitch to the first single crochet and do a chain three, which will count as my double crochet. And then I'll continue in the pattern, just like this pattern, where I will do a treble crochet where there was a double and a double crochet where there was a treble. And I'll just do that all the way around. So it's a two row repeat for each color. First row being single crochets all the way around second row starting with your chain three which counts as your double crochet and alternating between the double crochet and the front post treble crochet and repeat your colors as high as you would like and i'll meet you back here okay so here is my bag so far i did three rounds of each of the colors and i think that's a nice height now what i did was i stuck stitch markers in each of the corners and the way I figured out the corners was I counted all my stitches. I had 60 stitches around and I said, I'm going to make each side 10 stitches and the long sides 20 stitches. And then I just stuck my stitch marker here, counted to the 10th, put it here, then counted 20 across, put one here, 10, and then I have 20 left on this side. That way I know that it's even. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna do my trim in black. I figured that would be nice. It'd be a nice way to finish it off. The bottom starts out black, the top will finish off black. And also your hands are always up here touching things and black will hopefully hide more. So that was my thought process. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start a stitch before, a stitch or two before one of these stitch markers. Okay, and I'm going to just attach my yarn like I normally would. And chain to secure. There we go. And then I'm going to start single crocheting around. Now when I get to the stitch marker, I'm going to take that out. And I'm going to put my hook into both, I'm gonna fold this in first. I'm gonna put my hook into the, where the other stitch marker is. So I'm gonna take that out as well. Just keep an eye where that is. Okay, I'm gonna stick my hook into that one, pull it up and through and do a single crochet. Okay. And then I'm gonna continue around the edge. Okay, so that will bring those two corners together. And I'm gonna just keep going all the way around until I get to my next two corners. 
at which point I will do the same thing. Okay, now I'm getting to the next two stitch markers. So I'm going to take this stitch marker out. And put my hook into that hole. And I'm going to go over to where the, fold this in, go into where the other stitch marker is. You want to fold it in first so that it's in between the two. Okay, and I'm going to go into that stitch and pull up the loop. There we go, and do my single crochet. Okay, so now I have that folded in, and then I'm just going to continue around. Okay, I'm going to get back to the beginning. in the camera, I'm sorry for that. We are going to slip stitch into the first single crochet, and bring that through. Okay, and just, you can take a look at your bag, you can see how nice and folded that is. I think that looks so adorable. And then I'm going to fasten off. So I'll weave in that end, but this is what we have right now. Look how cute that is. So now what I want to do <coughs> is I'm going to want to make a loop and a button. So let's make our button first so that then we'll know that we make the right size loop. Now for your button, you can use any button. You can buy a button, use a button that you have that you love, or you can make a button. In this case, I made a button and I used the black ribbon yarn, you can see here. And if you watched my small bag tutorial, you know I made buttons for that as well. So I'll show you how to make this button. You can decide you can make this or you can get your own button. I, I decided I wanted to make a nice big button so it'll be easy to make the loop that goes around it. Plus I like the look of it. <laughs> okay, so to make a button, very simple. First thing I do, is I take my yarn, I'm gonna use the same black ribbon yarn, and I just wrap it around my two fingers a bunch of times. So, let me... And ribbon yarn's pretty thick, so with the yarn I used for the smaller bag, I had to wrap it more, but you know, I, about, I don't know how many times that was, what was that, five or six? Something like that is good. Then I pull up a loop, through the center using my working yarn and I chain to attach it just like that. Now I'm just going to go around doing a single crochet around the yarn all the way around. Just keep going like this and I keep my single crochets pretty close together. Now when I did this small bag I left a hole in the center of the uh, button. For this one, I kept going and going until you didn't really see a hole. So I'm just gonna keep going like this, around and around, and over top of the last round. And just keep going. This is a very simple way to do a button. 
I like little things like this. And there are many different buttons you can make. There are flower buttons, butterfly buttons. This is just a very simple button. Oops, caught that in there. And you see it's starting to fill in. And what I'm actually looking at here is the back of my button for this button. And you can go as much or as little as you want, make it your own. You can do the same color like I'm doing as the trim and the handles, or you can change it up, whatever you like. So you see, I'm starting to form my button. Now you can leave a hole in the center if you like, or you can keep going, which is what I did on this one here, until there's really just the indent, but it's not actually a hole. Now, once I get to where I feel like it's pretty closed up, then I'm just going to reach across and start actually closing it up, grabbing stitches and slip stitching to close it up. So, you know, just however you want to do it. See, and then there I have my button. And then what I do is I'll fasten off like that. And I'll leave in the end with my yarn needle. Put it on a yarn needle. You want to leave this piece a little bit longer when you fasten off. And then what I'll do is, I already have this button on, but if, say I was sewing it onto this side, I'll find the spot that I want to sew it on, I'll pull that yarn through, and I will fasten at the same time, come through the other side here, and start fastening and go round and round and round until my button is attached. Okay, so there's my button. Now what I have to do is I have to take my black yarn and make a chain on this side that'll fit over this button. And that's why I like to have the button on first because I want to make sure that I don't have a huge chain where it's not holding on to anything or too tight where I can't get it around it. So starting in the center of the back, now remember I had 20 stitches along the side. One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20. So in the middle, right around the 10 mark, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. These are my center stitches. I'll probably move out one from each of those and do my, let me see how wide this is. Yeah, do my chain there. So I'm going to attach to this one here. Attach to this one here. I just want to make it centered. So you count your stitches and find the center and work out from there. And do, you know, a few stitches to each side so that you can make your chain. So I'm gonna just chain to attach, tighten that. And then I'm gonna continue to chain. Just making a chain that's long enough. go around my button and I'll keep checking 
and just come like this. You see, no, not long enough yet. Okay, still not long enough because I want it to go underneath the button and around and back to the other side. Still not long enough. Okay, that's looking pretty good to me. It'll grab onto my button. Now, if I attach it at this point, it'll be too tight to get on and off. So I'm going to add a few more chains. Okay, now, if I attach it here, I'll be able to get it on and off. Okay, so I'm going to attach it right here to this. And that will be how I will attach and I can take it off. It works. <laughs> so now I can just tighten this up and fasten off my ends. And I single crocheted and did not mean to do that. So let me just get back here. I'm just going to slip stitch. There we go. And I will fasten off and tie in my ends. And weave in my ends. Okay, so there I have my button and my closure. And I can get it on and off, which is what I want. Perfect. Now I want handles. Okay, so now I'm going to make the handles for the bag. And of course, you could buy handles if you like, but I'm gonna make my own and I'm gonna make mine out of black ribbon yarn. However, when I'm showing you how to make the handle, I'm gonna do it in the light gray so that you can see the stitches more easily. The handle we're gonna make is called a Romanian cord. This is what it looks like. I made it for the other bag and it's nice and sturdy. I really like the look of it. So let's get started. The first thing you're gonna do is you're going to Make a slip knot. And you're going to chain two. One, two. Then you're going to go back to the first chain and make a single crochet in that chain. Okay. Now I'm going to take my stitch and just flip it this way so that I can see the little V here. And underneath that V is this bar. I'm going to stick my hook into that bar, pull up a loop, and then do a single crochet. Okay? Now I turn again. So I see the V and I see two bars. Now every stitch after this is going to be exactly the same. So this is it. I'm just going to go under both bars, pull up a loop, and single crochet. Then I'm going to turn again so I can see this V and I have the two bars and I'm going to go under those two bars again like that. Pull up a loop and single crochet. And again turn. There's my V and there's my two bars. And I'm going to go under both bars, pull up a loop, single crochet. And I am just going to keep, and you see it's starting to form here, I'm going to keep doing that until my handle is as long as I'd like it to be. Okay, so once you have your handle as long as you would like it, you just fasten off. And I leave a little bit of a tail. There we go. 
And I'm making this a short handle. You can do whatever you like for your bag. Okay, so here's my bag. And my thought is, this is the part that goes over the button. My thought is that I'm going to actually put my handle through this side and through this side, then through the back and this side, and tie it together to be one piece. I'll show you what I mean. And then it'll be a doubled handle, which should be pretty strong. So because you just have these spaces here, it's very easy to pick a spot and stick it through like that. And this is what I did also on the other bag as well. And then I'll go to a corresponding spot on the other side, which is probably this one here. And pull it through. And then I'm going to come on the back. I'm doing the um, an opening right next to after the pleat. So right about here. I'm going to come through there. And then the same thing on this side here. Okay. So then what I want to do is I just want to attach these two sides. So what I do is I actually take the end from one of the sides and I just put it in a yarn needle. Let me get a thicker yarn needle. There we go. And I bring it right through the other piece. Just in one of the spots. And then I'm going to tie a knot here. Nice and tight. So I have a knot. And then what I'll do is I'll just weave in the ends to kind of hold it tighter. So I'm going to take this end And since it's coming through this piece, I'm going to put it over on this side here and just put it through, pull it tight. See how that pulls the pieces together and okay, put it right through it. There we go. And pull it out and then I'll snip that off. Then I'll do the same thing with this other piece. Then I take that knotted part and I just hide it right there. And I have an end here to sew, I see. And then I have my handle, my doubled handle on my bag. I'm sorry, it's so hard to show you. Here, maybe if I lift this up like that. And then that's it. So you can make the handle any way you like. You can buy handles. You can make the button any way you like. You can buy buttons. You can really make it your own. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to put them in the comments below or send me an email to frannysquare at gmail.com. I will get back to you as quickly as possible. If you do make this project, I'd love to see pictures. So please submit them for the show and tell. Send your pictures and descriptions to my email address. Also, any other projects you have. Show and Tell airs every Sunday, so if you can get me your works by Friday, even Saturday, I can usually get it in that Sunday. As always, thank you so much for joining me. I truly appreciate it. Remember to make it your own, and I'll see you soon.